It's a lawsuit seeking damages of $1.6 billion, a lot of money. But you could argue the cost pales in comparison to the real issues at hand in the case of Dominion Voting versus Fox News. Aaron Moriarty outlines how we got here and what's at stake. We're grateful that you trust us, and we will try to be worthy of your trust. Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, Maria Bartiromo, and Lou Dobbs. Details of the election rigging are beginning to emerge from all around the country. Some of the best-known current and former faces of Fox News may soon trade their anchor chairs for the witness stand in a Delaware courtroom. They appear on the witness list, along with top Fox executives, including chairman and CEO Rupert Murdoch, in a defamation lawsuit that could have a devastating impact on the company. This is the strongest case you've ever seen? Strongest case in terms of the evidence. Lee Levine is a retired First Amendment lawyer who has litigated on behalf of major media companies, including CBS and Fox. I have never seen a case involving a public figure where the evidence of actual malice that they will have to put before a jury is stronger. Until it filed this lawsuit, few Americans knew much about the plaintiff, Dominion Voting Systems. During the 2020 election, Dominion provided machines and ballot scanners to 28 states. On election night, Fox News took many of its viewers by surprise with mark. this. Fox News decision desk is calling Arizona for Joe Biden. That is a big get. Chris Steyerwald, Fox News political editor at the time, helped make that call. I was surprised at how damn scared everybody was and how much just this intense fear. I knew that we were... Fear of viewers? Fear of viewers, fear about ratings, fear about Trump. What happened after that call was an exodus of angry Fox viewers, including President Donald Trump himself. To win them back... President Trump won by not just hundreds of thousands of votes, but by millions of votes. Dominion alleges Fox intentionally allowed attorney Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani... But this was a stolen election. ...and others supporting Trump to make false statements about Dominion. The Dominion software system has been tagged as one allegedly capable of flipping votes. The Supreme Court has said what is not protected by the First Amendment is the knowing falsehood, the calculated lie. Dominion has already begun making its case in public, releasing texts and other communications obtained through litigation, like this one sent by Fox chief political correspondent Brett Baer on November 5th. There is no evidence of fraud, none. Yet three days later, potentially a stolen election. His colleague, Maria Bartiromo, interviewed Attorney Powell, who falsely claimed she had proof that Dominion had rigged the election. They also used an algorithm to calculate the votes they would need to flip. Part of the proof provided by Powell, according to court documents, an email from a woman who said she gained information from speaking to the wind. Barta Romo herself later described the email as nonsense, and still... Wow, this, this is explosive, and we certainly will continue to follow it. Over the next days and weeks, Powell and President Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, continued to appear on Fox programs. Sean, it was a national conspiracy. Fox also received communications almost daily from Dominion refuting the false claims but Fox never made a retraction. One could argue that at the very beginning, when Giuliani and Powell were first saying these things, they had no reason to believe they were false. But then, once Dominion started sending information to Fox, saying, no, 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 what they're saying is false, here's why, then a reasonable jury could find that Fox knew it was false or probably false and let them come on and say it again. In fact, court documents show that Fox's own fact-checking unit, known as the Brain Room, found claims about Dominion switching or deleting votes are 100% false. On the surface, this looks terrible for Fox, but isn't there some truth to the Fox response that the plaintiff is just cherry-picking? Sure, and yeah, I mean, they may be cherry-picking, but they're extraordinary cherries. It's just genuinely pretty shocking.
Ben Smith has written extensively on media issues for the New York Times and now Semaphore, an online news site he co-founded. A big part of the case is the question of whether someone comes on your air and says something crazy. How responsible for that are you? And it's tricky with live television. Somebody just suddenly opens their mouth and says something, and a court isn't necessarily going to blame the broadcaster. So let me start by just saying, uh, this time is yours. But if you invite them back again and again and again, even as your senior executives are saying this person is crazy, don't put them on the air. And Fox show producers, according to court documents, continue to put Powell and Giuliani on air because it was good for business. Any day with Rudy and Sydney is guaranteed gold, wrote one producer for Lou Dobbs' show. What about Fox's argument, which is you've got a sitting U.S. president and his attorneys making allegations. That's newsworthy. And Fox argues that it had to cover it. I mean, I think that's a pretty strong argument. Fox didn't invent Donald Trump. Fox didn't invent Sidney Powell. And even if they hadn't gone on Fox, they would have been out there defaming Dominion anyway. So I think Fox will say, this isn't really our fault. We're just reporting on it. The judge has already ruled that statements broadcast by Fox were false and defamatory. And just this past week said Fox cannot argue those false statements were newsworthy. Still, Dominion faces the biggest hurdle of all, to convince a jury that Fox and its famous faces acted with actual malice, that they knew the claims were false or had serious doubts about them and aired them anyway. Former Fox News political editor Chris Steyerwalt. Didn't you in your deposition say by November 7th, when right. the election was called, nobody believed that? Donald Trump had won, right? I said no reasonable person. That doesn't include all TV anchors in the category of reasonable persons. I don't know what anybody believed in their heart of hearts. Fox News denies actual malice, asserting in court documents that it reported Dominion's denials and pushed back on Sidney Powell's allegations. She never demonstrated that a single actual vote was moved illegitimately by software from one candidate to another. Not one. I don't really think that's how defamation works. I don't think that if I defame someone and then you don't defame them, that I get credit for the fact that you didn't. And Fox also asserts that some hosts believed the allegations. In Maria Bartiromo's deposition, she says she still doesn't know what happened in the election. Does that get her off the hook for actual malice if she says, still don't know, I didn't know then and I don't know now? The very likely answer to that is no, that does not get her off the hook. As, a, as one of my former partners has been quoted as saying, there's no insanity defense in, di in defamation law. In a statement responding to this report, Fox said, Dominion's lawsuit is a political crusade in search of a financial windfall. But whatever happens in court, Dominion may already have won a victory by embarrassing Fox, releasing texts and emails that, among other things, appear to show Tucker Carlson supportive of Mr. Trump on air. An amazing, really an amazing conversation. Expressing something else privately. I hate him passionately. Dominion has already won a lot. Two months after the 2020 election, Chris Steyerwalt lost his job at Fox. It was officially part of a restructuring. He says he was fired for doing his job too well. He has written a book pushing for change at Fox and all television news networks. I think what they've already won is getting this, this basic admission that the news has to be the news.